in studio from Children's Home Society, Taylor Stobbs. Taylor, come way closer to your microphone or we'll never be able to hear you from that distance. That was a three-point shot you were going to make back out there. How are you? Doing well, thank you. How are you this morning? Excellent. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate you having us. All right, and you have brought with you Damian Engel. Yeah, nice to meet you guys, everybody. Nice to be here from Jersey Mike's, uh, both in the Commons and Spring Mills locations. You have great subs. Oh, well, thank you. Great subs. I think we can all agree on that this morning. <laughs> I brought some free sub cards. I figured so. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> just going to throw that out there. We appreciate that. I, I love I love your subs. The day just got better. Yes, it did. I did. So that's even better than we got, uh, what did we get, cheesecake last week? We I'd did, rather yeah. have a sub. Amy brought in uh, cheesecake sub, last sub week. Sub followed yeah. by cheesecake. Well, right. Amy's cheesecake was great. Technically, they're, they're sub cards. They're, so it's not the actual sub yet. You have to go and get the sub. Well, I, we can handle that. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit of leg work. The, the best sub is a, uh, is a sub that doesn't cost. That's right. Free food. Everyone loves free clothing and free food. Uh, Taylor, let's talk about what's going on with Jersey Mike's and your tie-in, because uh, all throughout the month of March, 10% of the proceeds from Jersey Mike's are going to help out what you're doing. And on one particular special day, 100% will do it. Yeah, absolutely. So Children's Home Society is so excited to be partnering with Jersey Mike's again for the fourth month of giving. So every year, um, Jersey Mike's Nationwide picks a nonprofit um, organization to honor throughout the entirety of March. Mm -hmm. um, so 10% of those sales do go to our agency and then on March 29th so the last Wednesday of the month 100% of your all sales will be going to um, Children's Home Society we are super excited this is the first year that we are going to be able to be set up at both locations um, in the Commons and in Spring Mills so we're gonna have folks there from open to close um, helping in whatever way so you know historically that's been helping um, bus tables keep the crowd you know excited we're delivering subs i think at one point someone was on the register mm -hmm. so we kind of just are all hands on deck to be able to uh, bring this day to fruition and we are so thankful for the partnership that we have with jersey mikes very nice jersey mikes why uh, why pick uh, children's home society well so well there's a lot of reasons but quickly to clarify so we uh we donate 100 percent of sales on the last wednesday of the month throughout the month we do a number of different donations um but but it is not not a strict 10 percent. i'm not sure where we got that from but that's a we we have a roundup thing and we have a one to five dollar option so it ends up being a large amount of money that comes from the month um, but i didn't want to miscommunicate anything and okay. so um but why do we chill why do we continue to choose children's home society i think at first it was um it was it was in the family and then the continuing relationship has been awesome because Children's Home Society comes out, three, four, five people come out on the day of giving. Um, they work with us. Uh, the team gets to meet them. They're super awesome uh, personalities, and, and we know it's going to the right spot, so we continue to keep the relationship strong every year. And now that we've added a second location and with more to come, um, I, I think we'll continue to support CHS in the, in the following. All right. Taylor, tell us about Children's Home Society and the work that you do. Absolutely. So Children's Home Society has been in existence since 1896. Uh, there are several locations throughout the state of West Virginia, and we have one here in Martinsburg. So um, Children's Home Society, really our overarching goal, our mission is to preserve the well-being of children's and families in our community, to strengthen those relationships, help assist them throughout their journey um, to their well-being. So we have several different programs, one of them being our foster care and permanency program. So that is, you know, um, having those children who are in the foster care system in foster homes um, while they are in that process. We also have our Safe Haven Child Advocacy Center, which is geared towards the multidisciplinary approach to child abuse and maltreatment investigations. We have Home Finding, which is helping children or helping families through the foster care process. We have mental health, both in-house and in the schools in Jefferson County. And we have our Family Support Center, which is a new program that we're really excited about. That's kind of a hub of resources for children and family in the area. And then we also have our We Can Mentor program, which is geared toward helping children um, kind of have that a safe and responsible adult in their life with an educational component. And then lastly, we have our Safe at Home program, which is geared toward helping kids stay in their home safe, kind of that wraparound service, the holistic approach. So really, um, our mission has always just been to help children and families in whatever way we can over the mm -hmm. years. That's looked like a lot of different things, uh, staying creative and um, you know, in our efforts with that. Matt Miller. Can you give us an idea of some of the numbers uh, that, that you work with, especially here in the Eastern Panhandle and the, the, the need for the service here in our area? Yeah, absolutely. So currently, I believe we have around 80 foster families um, in Martinsburg. So we are helping to serve Berkeley and Jefferson and Morgan County. Uh, we have... Um, 
within, I believe, the 50s or 60s of children currently in care. Um, our therap- therapist in-house has about 20 or so clients that she is actively serving. Our uh, therapists in the schools, I believe, are serving you know around 50 kids a week. Um, and then Safe Haven Child Advocacy Center in the last fiscal year served 364 um, new kiddos. And then for our Safe at Home program, I believe she has about 12 kiddos on her caseload. So those numbers um, kind of give somewhat of an insight of the work that we're doing, but for every child, you know, the amount of time and dedication that our um, staff has, you know, it really is substantial and profound. You mentioned that staff. How many staff members do you have? I believe we have in the 20s. So um, it's kind of always flux- fluctuating you know, for the need. So we do have a really dedicated staff. Um, I've been with the agency for four years, and I couldn't be more thankful or proud for the staff that we currently have that have such a commitment for children and families. Do you, oh, I was just going to ask about volunteers. Do you do you need and do you have a lot of volunteers then that help so that you know with, with a certain amount of staff, with volunteers you can reach even more absolutely we are always looking for volunteers in different ways really fortunate actually that the community is so you know drawn to our agency and wanting to help so uh, we have various uh, volunteer opportunities with our mentor program so we are always looking for new mentors to pair with children Um, we also have events throughout the year that we really always are looking for support so we have gift wrapping and around christmas time we have um, if you're interested in coming to help out um, at community events to talk about Children's Home Society. Um, if anyone is ever interested in volunteering, you can call and someone would be able to help you with it. There you go, John. Where, um, what, what sort of fundraising do you do? Do you get, uh, do you get any state money? Do you get federal money? What, um, how do you raise the money to have your program going? What are some ways you, you do that? Yeah, so we do have some state funding um, and some federal funding as well. So my program specifically, we are funded completely through VOCA and um, DJCS. So those are two grants that we use. We also do um, different campaigns throughout the year. So the Unity campaign, we've historically done the WISH campaign. Um, I believe we have some grants and support through Macy's. Um, and then a lot of it also is our fundraising so one of the reasons why our jersey mike's um, fundraiser is so important is that goes directly into our agency whether it be to help um, children directly to um, help staff with different costs whether it helps to fund positions so you know our fundraising efforts are huge to the work that we do as well well i know jersey mike's does a lot in the community um what is what's your position with with jersey mike's damien so i'm the general manager of the uh, commons location I thought so. I, I know I've seen you in there. I've gotten I've gotten subs in there more than more than a few times. I love the Italian sub. Um, what what other community things does does your organization do? I mean, so Jersey Mike's as a brand does a, a ton of things, and um, one of the things that we did uh, this past fall, we supported last year for the um, Day of Giving. It was mandated across all of the franchises for the Special Olympics. So then for Children's Home Society, we uh, did a donation weekend where we donated 20% of sales just on top of whatever we were, you know, we are required to do the, the month of giving, the, but we wanted to do that for Children's Home Society. Um, and then we always, uh, every year there's a Feeding America weekend where we donate a percentage of sales to the Feeding America organization. Um, and, that, and that's just a couple of the things. And with the month of giving really being a large amount of what we do, um, it's super important to us to give back. So you guys just you guys have the Spring Mills location now too. Correct. Are they looking at any of the locations here in the area? Uh, yeah. So we're we're um, we are getting close to signing uh, another agreement for three more stores. So the, those are locations are tentative, um, but we are we're pretty certain we're going to move forward and make it five. Very nice. It's always good to see a business that is a strong business in the community as far as serving our community expands. I mean, it's it's good when good people get to grow. As far as what you guys are doing, what are some things that you have a need for and what are ways that you think you can expand what you guys are doing in the community if you had more funding? Absolutely. So we are always, like I said, expanding and growing. So if there's an identified need within the community, we're one of those first agencies that are trying to get creative and think outside of the box of what we can do to assist. So we are looking to add a couple um, other programs to our agency. Um, We are venturing to move into Jefferson County with our Family Support Center. We are hoping to Uh, implement a program that will assist youth that are aging out of foster care. So with um, additional resources, additional, you know, financial um, assistance, we really are always 
um, looking to put that directly back into the community and the families that we are serving so that we can continue just the best that we can. I'm glad you brought that up about the youth aging out. I mean, that is, that's a serious problem in America because you get so many kids who, I mean, I know I have three kids who are all, you know, in their 20s now and, and they reach out for help just as much as they did when they were 14. I can't imagine kids who age out of a system and then all of a sudden have no safety net. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Scary. absolutely. It's something that you see, um, and it's not something that I think is really thought about um, once that child, you know, reaches their age. So mm -hmm. it's been an identified need, an identified gap. So we're working on trying to mitigate that. Is there framework in place already for helping kids who are aging out of foster care? They're maybe eight. They turn eighteen, nineteen. Now what? If their families don't stay in touch with them, is there any type of framework already in place that you can? grab onto and improve upon or do you have to create your own? So I don't necessarily think that'll be reinventing the wheel. You know, there are programs, there are um, services that do exist that we're trying to bring more here to the Eastern Panhandle. Mm -hmm. I believe that DHHR does have some services um, for youth transitioning out, but this would um, try to better meet that need. Did you pay much attention to the legislative session and the reorganization of DHHR, Taylor? So I did have the opportunity to go to Charleston for um, Victim of Crime Advocacy Day at the Capitol where we were discussing the uh, redistribution and restructuring of DHHR, yes. What are your opinions on, on the restructuring of DHHR and what you would like to see happen based on being on the ground and dealing with this. Yeah. So the little bit that I was able to understand um, of the House bill that was, you know, in discussion, that they are wanting to break it into several different sections to try to create a more consistent um, and more, you know, um, flowing structure. So mm -hmm. I'm um, in the position that if there is something that we can do to kind of create better organization and can assist, you know, not just children and families, but also those who have dedicated their lives to the department, then I'm all for that. How many kids do you see in the course of a, of a given year? Uh, it depends on what program. Um, so for my program specifically, Safe Haven, like I said, we saw 364 new children for interviews um, during that fiscal year and provided ongoing advocacy services for, I believe, 650 clients. So that is just one program. Mm -hmm. um, the numbers that we are serving um, you know, as a whole agency are not something I have on um, hand at this moment, but it's definitely um, you know, profound. All right, very good. Uh, again, during the month of March at Jersey Mike's, and it, the percentage varies each day, you were saying, Damien? So those are up to the customer as to how much they want to donate, I but see. we're constantly asking to round up. So 100% on March 29th, the last Wednesday of the month, and throughout the month, it'll be a large amount of money as well, just depending on how the customer traffic is. Okay, very good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And ultimately, how much money do you think you can raise doing this? So we were kind of just talking a little bit about the, um, that before we came on, and you were estimating that we're hoping to do a hundred loaves or, or a thousand loaves of bread, which so, equates to. So we would like to push a little over twenty thousand this year um, between one store. So that's that's just one store. So Spring Mills is probably going to add um, seventy five percent of that or so. So maybe total is a good goal is is, is to go for right around thirty thousand for Children's Home Society. Very nice. Well, um, any, anything else you'd like to add, or any other questions you guys have? I, I would just like to know how much more need is there in the Eastern Panhandle as a growing area and, and obviously one of the more wealthy areas in the state of West Virginia, there would be many who would say there's probably not as big a need, but with the growth in our area and the cost of living and things that are going on, how big is the need? Uh, to try to quantify that <laughs> would be a little bit difficult, um, right. but the need is definitely present. Um, despite mm -hmm. us being one of the largest areas in the state, despite us being, you know, um, one of the more, uh, I guess I would say, financially mm -hmm. sound areas, um, the need for children and families is still very much apparent. Mm -hmm. um, so. I would just say that you know the need is there. We are always looking to try and best um, meet the needs of the children and family in our community, and we could not do that without the community support that we have, mm -hmm. um, partnerships like Jersey Mike's, fundraising that we do, the support of the community. Um, so it's definitely there, and we're always looking to try and um, assist in any way we can. Any final thoughts between either of the two of you? I don't think so. We're super excited to continue the relationship, and, and it's a really big day for all of Jersey Mike's, and in particular our locations. So. Thanks for having us on here. I'm hoping it goes well. Great stuff. Great subs. We're so excited. We hope to see you all out there at either location, and we are just really looking forward to March 29th. Thanks for coming in. All right. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Yeah. Thank you. Taylor Stobbs and Damian Engel.